eerily haunting true stories about remote abandoned locations rich in history. Come with us and our travels from state to state, if you dare. <laughs> Be the last time anybody sees us alive. I don't know where she has a 40 Hello? Jamie, there is a beehive over there. Do you see that in the hole? Buckle up, Buttercup. Welcome to 50 States of Madness. Hi, welcome to 50 States of Madness. Hi, welcome. My name is Shannon. I'm Gina. Yeah. How are you? Good. I'm doing great. We're Good. here for another week. Another week. I yeah. wanted to give an update since um, last week we went to the movies and I said I was going to give an update on Are You There, God, It's Me, Margaret. Yes. And it's like a thousand percent you have to go see it. I loved it. I thought that we were going to see a bunch of teenage kids there, but there was a bunch of ladies in our <laughs> around our age in groups, like little teenagers running and flocking to the movie. I know. It was so cool. Everybody was laughing. It's like it's it it was way more than I expected. It was a fun movie. Mm -hmm. I definitely recommend it. Yeah. I, in fact, I was going to tell Savannah to go, but I'll wait yeah. until she comes and visits me and we can go. Yes. So. Definitely need to see it. So it's still in the movie. So go see. It. Yes, we did love it a lot. Yes. Well, th that was exciting for this week. Mm -hmm. What else came up this week? Oh, oh, what happened? We're working on our merch. Oh yes, and we got. Yes, we worked on the website this weekend. Yes, so yes, yes, yes. It's so we, be up uh, soon. yeah, we have. Um, our merch, our website coming soon. I know we've been saying that forever. I know, but actually it's almost coming. But we actually have somebody that's doing it for us now. So um, we don't have to try to figure it out. Yeah. So we're not trying to figure it out. And I'm, I'm wearing our merch as you can see, but super cute. But this is not our logo. As many of you know, that's not our logo, but, um, our new merch that's coming out probably in the next couple of weeks will have our actual 50 States of Madness logo um, on there. So, well, I'm excited that's coming up. Yeah. So that will be up and running hopefully in the next probably, I don't know, I think maybe like a, a week or two as soon as we can um, decide on designs and stuff like that, yeah. that we just have to choose them, which shouldn't be really hard to do. So but everything is all linked up and ready to go. So yep. yeah, so we're excited for that. So today um, we're taking you back to San Diego. Yes. And it's going to be a little bit of a ghost story, but true story tale. Mm -hmm. Because like we mentioned before, we visited the Hotel Del Coronado yeah. in Coronado, San Diego. I don't know, is it Coronado Island, right? Mm -hmm. San Diego. Yeah. Yeah. Go yeah. over a huge, crazy bridge to get there. Yes. And you don't really realize it. Like how crazy the bridge is until you're coming back on it. How tall and how long? Because when you come like back around and you like curve, you can see like the other side of it. And you're like, oh my God, like I'm up that and high. And then you look down and you're like, oh my God, that's the one. <laughs> It's crazy. But going over there, you're just like cruising like, oh, this is cool. It's pretty. But then coming back, you see the other angle and you're like, oh, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I went over. Oh, my God. <laughs> but um, but yeah, that's where we went to go see the Spreckles Mansion. And um, we had mentioned that we actually stayed longer than we anticipated. And this is the reason that we stayed longer is to do this tour um, from from this hotel. Yeah, it's a ghost story, but based on a real visitor who visited the Hotel Del Coronado in the 1800s. Yeah. So um, I guess we'll dive right into it. Yeah, this is where we ate our $30 cheeseburger. Yes. Well, we actually split it. So. <laughs> um, so Kathleen Morgan was born on September 23rd, 1865 in Hamburg, Fremont County, Iowa, to George Washington Farmer and Elizabeth Philomena Chandler Farmer. Oh. That's mouthful. Mouthful. That's a cool name. Philomena. Yeah. Philomena. I, I, yeah. I kind of like that. Yeah, I haven't really heard that. That's a cool one. Her mother died while giving birth to Kate because Kathleen went by Kate. She had an older sister, Mary, who passed away one year later on April 13, 1866 at three years old. 
In 1867, her father sent two-year-old Kate to live with her maternal grandfather, Joe Chandler. And it just kind of seemed like he just started his life over. Like he ended up getting a job and he ended up marrying another lady and moving to Texas. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't even sound like he raised. How do all these people end up in Texas? I don't know. (laughs) Texas, we always circle back to Texas somehow. Texas is huge back then, I guess. <laughs> Covered all of the United States. Right. So on December 30th, 1885, Kate married a man named Thomas Edwin Morgan. And they had one son, Thomas, who was born on October 31st, 1886. But unfortunately, two days later, he died. So it's really sad. Maybe because he was born on Halloween. He was born on Halloween. That's <laughs> pretty cool. So four years later, she ran off to Visalia, California, and would later end up in Los Angeles, California, working as a domestic for a wealthy family. Not too much has been recorded about this time and if she was traveling alone or with someone, but eventually it rounds back up to where, you know, she meets up with someone. So she told the family she would be traveling to San Diego by train one weekend, but would be returning the next day because they had this event um, coming up and they were expecting her back the next day. Passengers on the train to San Diego recall seeing a young woman matching Kate's description on the train arguing with a male companion. He got off the train in the city of Orange, California with the luggage tickets. One story is that Tom, her husband, he was a card shark and a gambler and that they would travel the rails together throughout the United States, um, like um, hustling people Mm -hmm. because, you know, that's how they spent their time on the trains is gambling. And then... um, Kate would, they disguised themselves as brother and sister. They kind of like, well, I don't know. I don't want to say disguised, but they kind of presented themselves yeah. as brother and sister. And they would have the people, She, he, Tom would have Kate flirt with the males that he was trying to swindle. Yeah. And so that's why he would pass her off as his sister. Kind of sounds like a Polly Bartlett story. Yeah, a little bit, <laughs> right. you know? And that's one story is that, yeah. well, they knew that he was a gambler. She would always repeat that story. She would tell people he was a gambler. Um, one story is that he ran off and left her, but another one is that they would ride the rails together. And it was a very common mo- mode of transportation back then. Yeah, And so that they would have the um, her to distract his opponents right. and get their money. So um, one theory is that it was her husband he was, she was actually arguing with on the train. And in other stories, it could have been a lover. So, Mm, okay, Kate, I know. So in 1892, when Kate arrived in San Diego, it was a fairly small city with only 16,000 people. The population had seen a huge decline in 1888 when an economic depression swept across the country. During that year, Coronado was just being developed and it was more rural. And we talked about that for the Whaley House Mm -hmm. because of the gold rush and then people went to San Diego. Wasn't that busy? Mm -hmm. And, and it's crazy to think of it like that because mm-hmm. now it's just like everywhere else so overpopulated. But it's a huge city. Yeah. And there's so many things and so many people there now. Yes. <laughs> so people had flocked to California in 1848 due to the gold rush. California became known as the Golden State because of the gold in Northern California and the endless sunshine in Southern California. By the time Kate was traveling by train in 1892, California was known as a wonderful place to live, work, and play, and the best mode of travel was by train. On Thursday, November 24th, 1892, 24-year-old Kate Morgan arrived in San Diego at the Hotel Del Coronado alone and registered herself at the hotel desk as Mrs. Lottie A. Bernard, Detroit. So she didn't even say where she was really coming from. And I find this really, really strange. Mm -hmm. And it kind of lines up with maybe they were, her and her husband were swindling people. Yeah, she didn't want to go by her. And yeah, so. But it's funny because I think back of, this wasn't in the 1800s, but it was in the early 1900s when we talked about the Cecil Hotel here in downtown Los Angeles. How many people would go in there and, you know, check in under a different name when they didn't want people to find them. Yeah. So. Yeah. And maybe that was the reason too. She didn't want anybody to find them. Yeah. But the whole time you'll hear that she was actually looking for somebody to find her. Yes. So during this time, it was very unusual for women to travel alone without an escort, usually being a male chaperone, family member or housemaid. The hotel 
Del Coronado had a separate entrance for women who were traveling unaccompanied for privacy. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, they didn't want the men there to know that they were alone. Yeah. So they would have the separate entrance off to the side mm-hmm. where they would go in and register. And them. she showed us, like, our yeah. tour guide showed us, you know, all these places, which obviously are not there, like, functioning anymore like that. Yeah. But she showed us, like, the areas of where these places were. Yeah, like the entrance. Now it's like just an entrance into like the banquet area. Uh, yeah, it's just a door. Yeah, it's just a door. However, Kate insisted that her brother was coming up to join her shortly. And she, she kept saying her brother, mm-hmm. her brother. And so that's where I'm going back to the story about, sorry, my voice. <clears throat> yes, of them, what right. they would do on the train. So yeah. was it really her brother? Or was it her husband? Or was it her husband? Tom. Was it her lover? Yeah. Was it, you know? It's so much speculation. She arrived without any luggage, just a small handbag since her male companion had gotten off the train in Orange, California with the luggage tickets. So she didn't have the tickets to claim her luggage. So he ended up because he ended up getting off the train in Orange. So she only had her little handbag and like a hat, the, what she was wearing. Yeah. The desk clerk who registered Kate told another clerk, A.S. Gomer, that a woman who appeared very peculiar had registered earlier in the afternoon. She looked rather sickly and kept mostly to her room. In the morning after she checked in, she approached A.S. Gomer and asked him how she could retrieve her baggage at the train station in San Diego. She told him how her brother had inadvertently taken the baggage claim checks and he would be arriving that day. She told him that his name was Dr. Anderson. And back then, the train station stopped in San Diego, but there was another little train hop that went from San Diego over into... Coronado Coronado. Island. So back in those days, guests were assigned a bellboy who attended to the guests throughout their stay. I wish they still did that. I know. Harry West was assigned to Kate Morgan, and she revealed to him that she was sick with neuralgia, which was a general term for nerve pain or spasms. She told him that her brother would be joining her. Kate did not have a brother, and it is rumored that she was there to meet up with the lover. The bow boy who attended to her room often revealed that Kate told her she was suffering from stomach cancer and worried that her health would not recover. So there was all these reports of seeing her. Yeah. Not feeling well. Yeah. She looked bad. She, you know, looked sick and ill. Yeah. She, she told everybody that she wasn't feeling well. Yeah. So. So he noted that she seemed noticeably despondent on the verge of melancholy. And the reason why some of these terms are being used, because there's actually, um, one of our sources was a book that was written, but it's actually taken from the voice of the witnesses. So it was um, police statements mm-hmm. um, after the fact that they actually um, took all these statements statements from these witnesses. So this is actually their language. Their language, yeah. So, which is pretty cool. Yeah. On Kate's third day at the hotel, she walked into the drugstore appearing to be in a lot of pain. Mr. Fosdick, who ran the store, suggested that she see a doctor, but she told him her brother was a doctor and would be arriving later. Later that day, Kate asked the bellboy to run to the store and get her an empty pint bottle and a sponge. By Monday, November 28th, Kate's male companion still has not arrived. Kate sent the bellboy to the hotel bar twice, once for a glass of wine and next for a whiskey cocktail. The bellboy then fixed a bath for Kate and brought her a pitcher of ice water. She told the bellboy, Harry West, that she would be in the bath for an hour or two. When did the water get really, really cold? I want to know what bellboy is running your bath water for you. I know. I guess they said it was very common back in those days for them to do all this stuff for you. They were like Man. literally uh, waited on you hand and foot. And she didn't even have the most expensive room. They said the most expensive rooms because back then there weren't really elevators or anything. So back right. in the day, it would be like the first floor would be right. the most expensive. And as you go up, it'd be less and less expensive. She was on the third floor. They said she paid about $3.60 a night, which was pretty pricey back then. Considering what bit. those rooms are going for right now. Yeah. I'm probably, I wonder if it's pretty equivalent. Hmm. I'd be I don't curious know. to find out. Yeah, that'd be interesting. <clears throat> but they're they're very pricey. We very, very them. pricey. So um, after her bath, she asked the bellboy to dry her hair. So this was not an uncommon practice. It was very, very common service that they would provide. Which Did he like style it odd. too? Or I think they would. Keep her blowout, honestly, or? when you're, I know, I, when I was looking at it, it's more like they just would just with the towel because they didn't have like blow dryers or anything. Oh, you know? 
<laughs> oh, so yeah. they would just dry out their hair. Yeah, they would just help her dry her hair. So, um, but it was just odd that her hair was completely soaked because back then they didn't wash their hair every day. Right. And so um, he just found it odd that her hair was completely soaked, but she stated to the bellboy that she accidentally fell into the tub. It is speculated that this may have been the first time that Kate tried to commit suicide by drowning. That's why she was asking him for the drinks. Mm -hmm. And then she was only going to be, she wanted probably an hour or two to be yeah. left alone. So her body would, would be found, you right. know, but um, nobody would try to save her. Nobody. Yeah. Nobody would try to save her, but it, and so that's why her head was fully emerged. Right. And you know, she probably chickened out. That well, would be a hard way to yeah, die. I mean, you don't wash your hair in the, in the bathtub. Yeah. And that seems like very well, I think intrusive. Back then they to would like, though, because they didn't have showers, did they? I don't know. Eighteen hundreds. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, dude. I don't know. It just seems weird. I don't know. Though I keep going back to like drying your hair. Like, could you imagine like not only a person that you don't know, but a man that you don't know, like towel drying your hair for you it's a very personal service but yes. they said that it was very common during this time i just find it odd because they're just so discreet on the women having to check in on the side door and then so yeah. other men won't know but yeah you got this smell bellboy Bell running back and forth for you getting you drinks and drying your hair and running your bath running water. your bath yeah huh. interesting so the bellboy reported that kate seemed to be suffering a great deal and moaned in pain she looked pale and that she slept for most of the day so Wes, the bellboy, he went back to A.S. Gomer to tell him what was happening with Kate and how, like her condition and her right. state. And so um, Gomer set up a house, sent up a housekeeper, not set up. He sent, <laughs> he sent, he sent one up. He sent one up. He sent one, a housekeeper up to try to talk to her. And he wanted her to talk her into having a doctor see her because since her brother, supposedly brother, right. still hasn't arrived dr anderson he just felt like she needed somebody to see her but kate refused and repeated that her brother dr anderson would be there soon afterwards gomer himself went up to see kate and she said she already knew what was wrong with her and that's when she proceeded to tell him that she had stomach cancer and the doctors had already given up hope so she was letting mm. him know that she was really sick so kate let him know that her brother practice medicine in Illinois and would be there to take care of her. So she only wanted her brother to see her at this point. Gomer was concerned and I'm like, this woman's dying of stomach cancer. And his concern was that Kate would not be able to pay his, her, her bill. bill. Yeah. yeah. For all the charges she was making to her room account. Cause she was ordering food and whiskey yeah. and bar stuff. And, and they're just yeah. like, uh, and they're drying her brother. Hair. Yeah. <laughs> um, so they wanted to make sure that she can pay for her bill. So, he proceeded to ask Kate if she was traveling with enough funds considering her condition. So Kate instructed Gomer to send a telegram to G.L. Allen in Hamburg, Iowa. And they've never verified if they're who this G.L. Allen is. Yeah. But the funds arrived at the hotel the following morning, extending $25 credit to a Mrs. Lottie A. Bernard, hmm. which is strange. Yeah. So this G.L. Allen... I would love to find out how, what his relationship was it's, with her yeah. for her, him to know her alias. Well, and at that time, that's a lot of money. $25 was a lot of money. That's a lot of money back yeah. then. And so she, she was well off. And, um, it's funny. I'm starting now that I'm like processing all this information, I'm starting to wonder if maybe it was a racket with her and her husband going around because somebody else knew about her alias and mm -hmm. maybe that's not an uncommon name for her to stay at in different places right i don't know it's just well and again like back then you know like now you can just like type something in a computer and all these things pop up back then you couldn't do any of that no you're gonna find out who these people were no. nothing i still can't find out who gl allen is yeah <laughs> <laughs> with our computer stuff yeah. So after Gomer left, Kate asked the bellboy Wes for some matches so she can burn some papers in the fireplace. No one knows the contents of the papers she wanted to burn. She then walked back to the drugstore very slowly and in a great deal of pain. She mentioned to TJ Fisher, a real estate agent who had an office next to the drugstore, that she was going into downtown San Diego to retrieve her baggage. 
She hopped on a train from Coronado to downtown San Diego, but her first stop was not to pick up the baggage. Her first stop was to stop at this, con- I want to call it like it's a convenience store now, mm-hmm. but back then it was like a, called a specialty store. Right. She walked in and she asked about purchasing a revolver and some cartridges, but the clerk said that they didn't carry those there. So he um, proceeded to tell her where to find these items. And when he was interviewed by the police, he said that at the time she appeared very nervous and very excited. Like, not excited how we would probably. Right. Like, happy excited, but just, like, you know. Excitable. Like, she's nervous. Yeah, very nervous. Yes. Um, He said that she spoke in a really low voice and seemed to be in a great deal of pain. So it's funny how they put in nervous, excited, but low voice, great deal of pain. So I'm picturing, like, this woman, like like you said, on a verge of a panic attack almost. Yeah, she's probably just in so much pain that she just, you know. Yeah, I mean, she if didn't know true. what to, I mean, but could you imagine being in that kind of pain? Stomach cancer has just, to be one of the worst. But I mean, just constantly. Yeah. Like, no, no stopping. And back then, they didn't have any drugs like they do now to, you know for pain or you know yeah and to be by yourself Mm -hmm. so whatever male companion you know is still hasn't shown up yeah knowing that if it's true that she's really that sick and she is has the stem of cancer and she's dying like it's like if I were to get in a fight with my husband and he took off on the train and I have cancer I and he never shows up yeah you know not even a day or two later nothing yeah yeah he directed Kate to chick's gun shop So when Kate went into Chick's gun shop in the late afternoon, she told him that she was buying a gun for a friend for Christmas. She wanted him to show her how to load it, the gun, and how to, you know, kind of like, how do you work it? And so he did it for her. But two witnesses nearby was watching this whole transaction, and they were a little bit concerned because after she walked out, they kind of mentioned to the owner, like maybe you shouldn't have done that because she looks like she's going to hurt herself. Right. Like they did not see that she was in her right state of mind when she left the gun shop. Kate then returned to the hotel without her bags. So she never went for her baggage in San Diego. That tells you a lot that she wasn't expecting to need them. Mm -mm. Yeah. No. I mean, what is she going to need them for? Yeah. So that evening, Kate went back to Gomer's office one last time to see if there had been any telegrams or letters for her. He told her no, and that was the last time he saw her alive. Imagine the devastation. Yeah. The next morning, Tuesday, November 29, 1892, the hotel electrician was turning off the night lights around the exterior of the hotel when he saw Kate lying on the steps, feet towards the ocean. She seemed to be dead for quite a while, and there was blood on the steps and a gun nearby. The electrician left to find help. He ran into the hotel gardener and they notified the hotel assistant manager. The San Diego deputy coroner arrived to the view the scene around 9.30 a.m. He said that she had been dead for about six hours. Kate's room was searched and not too many items had been found, but there was a monogrammed handkerchief. And I'm curious to know when they say monogram handkerchief, did it have her monogram on it? What did it, yeah. Or was it a male monogram? initials were on yeah, there? Yeah, I want to yeah, know Yeah, was it her Lottie... Bernard? Bernard, which monogram? Yeah. yeah, I'm really curious. Yeah. They didn't mention it anywhere. Kate Morgan, who was it? Yes. Some burned papers in the fireplace, so she did end up burning some papers. And it appeared that her bed had not been touched all night. It was declared that Kate had been killed by a single bullet to the head. So, one story, she committed suicide. There has been some theories out there that it, the gun that that was laying next to her was not the gun that, you know, shot her, was not the gun that matched the shot in the head. But uh, later on, they did some investigations. Some other um, people looked at the case, you know, that were investigating to see. And it was determined that it was suicide. So just want to lay those rumors to rest. It was the gun that she bought. At- it was the gun that she bought that she shot herself in the head with. So we went there and we did the ghost tour. We did. And I gave you a little bit of background on the history of it and who Kate Morgan is and why they believe she's the one who haunts the yeah, hotel. the hotel still to this day. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So when we were there, um, Shannon and I went and we, um, we went into the hotel. We were kind of snooping around 
we kind of didn't know anything about it. We just mm-hmm. wanted to go see how pretty it was because it was near the Sparkles Mansion. Yeah. So we walked across. We ate lunch. And then we um, we walked around. And then we ran into some people that told us about this. We were this, in the bookstore. Yeah, this tour. So we, well, we were in, like, the gift shop. The gift shop, yeah. And then we saw this book amazing that's where I got a lot of the details from because of the interviews they actually it, yeah they actually put the interviews in there it's called the beautiful yes. stranger the ghost of Kate Morgan and the hotel del Coronado so um it's we were both just kind of looking at the book and we're like should we buy it should we buy it should we not buy it and we're like we're gonna buy it yes <laughs> so um so it has some stories from people who have actually so Shannon and I um snuck up to the room because it it tells you that you know you're not supposed to unless you're a guest at the hotel you're not supposed to go up to the rooms but we Walk did the halls, yeah but we did why not and so we um we looked like guests of the Coronado of course we were dressed pretty fancy in our leggings but we wore our best leggings just saying yeah. and our sweatshirts which yeah. we wore our best sweatshirts I'm just saying yeah. so our vans we looked you know we look like we we fit fit in in. definite beach attire yes so um so they they say that you know kate her spirit haunts the hotel and especially um guests have reported having unusual things happen in room 3327 which was her room um I always, when, when things like this come across, I always wonder like, was it really her room? Because after something like that happens, um, they always renumber the rooms, they move things around. Yeah. Cause I think originally it was like 302. Yeah. But so, but apparently this was, it's now room 3327. Yeah. Um, and it's funny because I read different places said like, no, that's not the room. It's this room three something 17 you know but i'm gonna go with what the The, hotel says yeah and that's yeah of course yeah so this is uh before we even read the book um the guy at the who was it the The concierge is the one who actually is the one that actually told us because go up to room 33 what is it 3327 because when we did the tour the tour guy didn't even give us the room number Wouldn't she even said tell us. she just said it's on the third floor there's yes. a room on the third floor that she stayed in because i am sure morbid people like us you know like oh my god let's go check out the room let's do this so i'm sure we they jump have, in front of the room. yeah so we did yes <laughs> we did our jumping photos if you guys remember those from wyoming yes. we had some jumping photos actually from the hotel the del hotel. coronado so um so I'm just going to read a couple of little short stories from the book of people's experiences there. So this is from, um, they don't give their names. It's just a Mr. and Mrs. R. Uh, from They're from Lake Elsinore, California. So this was from February of 2000. So very, in, well, I wouldn't say very 23 recently. 23 years ago, yeah. but not in the 1800s. Yeah. Like pretty recent. Time goes by so fast. I feel like. I know when you say 2000, you're like, oh, it was just yesterday. I know. "Mm, No, it wasn't. So sad. (laughs) So Mrs. R and her husband decided to spend a long Valentine's Day weekend at the Dell. And they call they call this hotel the Dell. Um, Unfortunately, the Victorian Republic, where they had wanted to stay, was completely sold out, except for the first night of their planned weekend getaway. As a result, the R's made reservations for one night in the Victorian building and the remaining nights at the hotel's ocean towers. The day Mr. and Mrs. R checked in had been a rainy and cold day, which made their room even more inviting. So they decided to stay, stay in and order room service. Later that evening, a hotel manager came by to ask them if anything had been inadvertently left in their bathroom, possibly by a hotel employee. The male manager was accompanied by a female housekeeper. While the manager went to check out the bathroom, the housekeeper left her distance, peering into the room from, from the hallway. After dinner, Mrs. R took a shower where they noticed that the bathroom lights were dimming and flickering off and on. After her shower, Mr. R took a shower. While, while he was showering, Mrs. R noticed that the tassel on the room ceiling fan began circulating as if someone had walked by and brushed it. Later on, both Mr. and Mrs. R were in bed asleep. Their bed covers were jerked off, were jerked off the bed. 
Mrs. R., who thought her husband was just hogging the blankets, went right back to sleep. In the morning, Mr. R. asked his wife, did you see what happened last night? Mrs. R. had no idea what her husband was talking about. He then told her that the covers had been pulled off by someone standing at the foot of the bed. Oh, my God. No. <laughs> um, where he could see the outline of a female head and body. To make matters worse, he was lying in the bed too afraid to go back to sleep. Mr. R. began hearing the guest room doorknob rattling. Though he felt drawn to find out what was causing the noise, Mr. R. could not bring himself to going to the door. Only after Mr. R. told his story did Mrs. R. tell her husband about having seen the room's fan tassel moving inexplicably um, the night before. Imagine Mrs. R. surprised when, she, when her husband then told her that he had witnessed a similar thing after she had fallen asleep. He told her that the fan tassel began to move as if someone had walked by and batted it. Perplexed by these events, Mr. and Mrs. R. said a little prayer for what they imagined was the troubled spirit in room 3327. Afterward, they called a hotel bellman to help them move into their, into their ocean tower room for the remainder of their stay. When the bellman arrived, he greeted them by saying, well, what was it like to sleep in the haunted room? So they didn't know when they got no. placed in there. No. Um, and that was the first either one of them had ever heard anything about a Hotel Del Coronado ghost. Mrs. R. later reasoned that the hauntedness may have may have explained the housekeeper's unwillingness to come into the room the night before, preferring to wait in the hallway instead. Curiously, yeah. Mrs. R. reported uh, later that she had had one of the most peaceful night's sleep in her entire life in room 3327. She remembers having wonderful dreams with children's laughter. And although Mr. and Mrs. R. were more saddened than unnerved by their experiences in room 3327, they admitted that they have no intention of ever staying in that room again. Three weeks after the Dell visit, as Mr. and Mrs. R. were recalling the strange goings on they experienced at the Dell, the phone rang. It was a call from San Diego's Old Globe Theater informing Mr. and Mrs. R. that they had been chosen as the grand prize winners in a contest. The prize, a trip for two to the Hotel Del Coronado. <laughs> the R's were thrilled, but when they made their reservations, they made it very clear that they were willing to stay in any room except 3327. I don't blame them. Although I'm kind of like, man, I wonder if we stayed there, if we could stay there. If we could afford it, I would stay there. Yeah. Um, the Old Globe Theater. I'm interested in knowing. Is that the one that we passed by? That really beautiful one that had the um. Oh, musical maybe. Down. Oh, it's yeah. like only about a block away from the hotel. Yeah, they were having a. What was it? Some um, kind of musical. Yeah, it was a musical. Shannon and I wanted to stay for and see, yeah. but um, we couldn't because we were going to do this tour. Um, so another one from October of. 1992, according to October 1992 San Diego Women article in the November 1992 San Diego Union Tribune article, when writer Sharon Whitley stayed in the Kate Morgan room, a towel she had not used became rumpled and smeared with lipstick. Lights flickered inexplicably. Visiting friends told her that they felt as if someone was watching that. While friends she spoke with on the phone complained of static and the feeling that someone was listening in. Interesting. Whitley also had trouble getting into her locked room and eventually requested a duplicate key. In addition, visiting friends reported that they had heard voices coming from Whitley's empty room. The noises stopped abruptly after they knocked on the door. Um... Was this the same one? I, I'm trying to think that I saw a video where they set up, like some paranormal investigators set up cameras, and you see the, the lights from the bathroom flickering on and off and stuff. Is that from this hotel? I'm going to see if I can find videos of it. Um, well, I mean, I know that when we did the tour, she showed us, like, some videos of <gasps> stuff that's, that's happened. That's what it was. Um. That people, maybe they weren't paranormal investigators, but they were just people that set up their camera because weird things were happening to them. Well, the it room. was the employees that work there. Oh. But it wasn't in this room, but it was, um, it was when, remember they were like waving something under the door and they had <gasps> oh, it like on video. Yeah. yeah. If you guys are ever there in Coronado. Take the tour. Take the tour. It's only, it's not that much. I don't I think remember the, if the it was. the ghost tour was like. 
40 bucks for no the, it wasn't even that much i 40 think it bucks might for have the been both of us remember we thought it was like going to be for just oh was yeah just yeah single, yeah and then so it's 20 charges. yeah so it's 20 dollars a person um it's so cool though it's yeah. it's really cool the lady that does like the tour guide lady like she's all kind of dressed up and like um, kate morgan yeah like kate morgan and um because kate and, morgan just wore a black dress yes her whole visit there so yeah so um it's really they get into character and um but the stories yeah. they tell are really nice and they talk about the history of the hotel and they also talk about other ghosts that may be there you know old mm-hmm. ex-employees that have died on yeah the property that have died and there stuff. Yeah. yeah and they so. take you in there to the um what was that first place that we went to it was like a yeah is i don't know it was the first part of the hotel when it first yeah, started or there's something. like that tunnel there yeah. and um there, it's a really cool tour, but they also, um, back in the day and when you read this book and they talk to the people and they're interviewing them, some of them like, where do you live? The hotel. Mm-hmm. Like that was their place of residence yeah. since the place was so rural back then when they were building it, it wasn't right. a big old town. They actually lived at the hotel. Right. So they died at the hotel, you mm-hmm. know? So, yeah. 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 So, really but it was really interesting. So if you guys um, are ever in the area, it's definitely worth a trip, even if you don't take the tour, just to go visit the hotel. Yeah. Because it is so beautiful. Um, and if anybody's ever ex- been there and they experienced anything there, or yeah, they have please anything let us to, know. Yeah, write it in the comments, please. Yeah, we would you know? love to know yeah. um, if anybody. Tell us your story. And that goes for, like, any places that we talk about. Like, if any of you guys have... Um, have any stories of anything that you want us to talk about too actually um uncle creepy uh he wrote me about a story um i was gonna send it to you yeah we're gonna check it out it's in fresno super interesting and um and also um a friend of mine at work george he turned me on to a story from the uk and we don't usually do stuff out of the united states but this sounded really interesting so we might um we might touch on that too to that yeah because that's so if you guys you know again have any stories that um any story like personal stories we would love to hear them of any of the places or anywhere if you have any hauntings or photos or Mm -hmm. oh my gosh i would love to see please let us know um send them to us on um either our email 50 states of madness at gmail.com or um, you can DM us at 50 states of madness on Instagram. We're on TikTok, And um, if you would like to support our Patreon, we are at patreon.com slash 50 states of madness. Thank you so much for yeah. joining us this week. Yeah. So we will be back next week. See you later. Bye. Bye.